protect them. Any advice for lost 20-year-old? Save, work as much as you can, and network. That's all you can do. Save, 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 and network, network, network. And you're going to find out very fast. This is the biggest black pill that you'll ever receive. Do you know that meme that your uncle would tell you? It's not what you know. It's who you know. It's true. Because a lot of times, the thing that you're supposed to know, you actually develop that skill after you get the position you want. I can't tell you how many times I've been put in a position that I'm not qualified for and I'd have to learn on the fly, but thank God, because I did learn on the fly. I wanted to keep that position. Get in shape too. Well, look, to be a complete human, to have like maximum good mental health, it's three things, right? This is super simple. Look at this shit, right? Look at this. It's three things. Can you name them, bro? Here, I'll draw it fast before you name it. Check it out. It's three things, and a lot of people confuse this shit. Check it out. We can evenly separate them, and then you can change it depending on who you are. So one is, I want to say passion, but let's just say career. Career. Right, And it must be something like, uh, it can't be a job. For example, I have a job and I have a streaming, but streaming is my career because I can see me doing it for 20 years straight in with different people, different networks, different kinds of podcasts, different games that blow up, blah, 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 blah. You get what I'm saying, right? That it is considered like career. I don't, I don't know, but it's not a career, but you know what I'm saying right that there's it's like your it's your sandcastle you're building right so it's this number 2 is taking a good shit and number 3 is social life this is the holy trinity of good mental health right and why I switched it from fitness to taking a good shit is because these high-protein diets that make you jacked and shit, if you're bleeding through your ass, bro, yeah, that's not... You're going to be angry throughout the day and you're going to hate your life and you're not going to actually perform, right? You're not going to do good. So it actually comes down to being so healthy that you take the best shits on earth. Like, you are shocked at... Basically, the highest level of euphoria you get throughout your day is not drugs, it's nothing, it's taking your shit, right? And this comes with fasting, hydration, fruit, and activity, right? Activity must be, ready? Anaerobic, right? It cannot be your oxidative pathway, so this is what I want to tell you. You can't be talking. That's not your fitness. It's your training to be better at something, right? So it's, right? It must be anaerobic, non-oxidative pathway, not jogging, deadlift, squat, bench, Although I really don't think you guys should squat and deadlift until you're good. Because that can really get you out of the game. And you can't go to work if you fuck up bad. But once, you, you know, strength is a skill. So once it's up there, then you can start incorporating it. You know, still stay safe. But check it out now. Now, some people are happier with the social life being this large. That's fine if you know that's your nature. The problem is most young men crave responsibility. So most young men are much happier doing me of last year where it looked like this. Right? Most of my priorities was just career, saving money, etc. Right? So... We'll just change this to fitness, right? Now that you understand. Okay. 
And now for social life, you can have one of two things, okay? Social life means you must have a friend group. But as soon as you turn into adult, you delete all your contacts as friends and your coworkers from your career are now your friends. That's your social life. If you still chill with your friends as an adult, you're a fucking loser, right? You're a fucking loser. The biggest losers still chill with their high school friends, okay? If you chill with your high school buddies, you're a fucking loser, right? For my high school buddies that I love to death, when I see them, it's all love, but most of the time I'm chilling with my sales team, my security team, drug dealing team, you know what I mean? So the, being an adult just means that the fun days are over. And now you're kind of, you're very cerebral about your career. That even in your downtime, it's kind of connected to your career. And you'll be happier this way, right? You don't want to be the guy that goes to work and you're like the worst there. That fucks with your head. But if you're always with your coworkers, you can only get better, right? Social life also means networking with strangers. And dude, this is hard. I'm antisocial. And every opportunity I ever got, people love me. I'm so charismatic. They chase me. They want to give me opportunity. And I'd kind of run from it. Eh. But no, take advantage of everything. Everything, right? You're supposed to be meeting new people, right? And even if they're not, you're not getting anything from it, treat, just see it as fun, right? Pretend, I like, this is what I like to do. I like to pretend I'm like some KGB guy. I'm like, oh, I'm going to see if I can talk to these guys. And these guys are older with suits and ties. Let's code switch, right? And so I go, interesting bull market we're in. And they go, dude, you should fucking take down my info. You're fucking, you're a genius. And I'm like, okay, I'm in with the crypto guys, right? That was easy, right? But the problem most people have is whether they get laid or not, social life to them means this is the biggest mistake young men make, right? Is whether you're good at this mid or suck at it, you're, this is what you think social life is. When you can only get laid if you have a social circle already. That means homies people you can count on, people who go out with you, etc., etc. That's why they're called chicks, right? Women are called chicks because they don't just look at you. They look at your nest, your TV, apartment, and social life, right? They're called chicks because they're looking at your nest, your lifestyle. I don't care how studly you are. She's not coming back to the trap house and you know it. And if she does, is that really the one? You know what I mean? Is that worth your time? IDK. Now, fitness, what a lot of people don't understand, because a lot of people just throw this out the window. Fit guys throw this out the window, right? Let alone unfit people. What people don't understand is these are connected, right? When you have a good fitness routine, and I mean you're training, you're getting better at the skill of strength, right? Right? This is progress. You're making progress. You're moving more weight, right? Muscular adaptations are only from more volume over time. You're adding reps to your five rep max, right? These are connected, dude, right? For example, think of when you used to have, uh, when I had a construction job or anything that required like physical labor, I'd come home with more energy. And I never understood why. Days I would work five days a week, I'd have more energy on the weekends and even the evenings of the weekdays. That's why a higher fitness level means more energy for your career. Right? Does that make sense? When you are fit, you have more energy to go back to your craft, hit it harder, not spin your tires, get better at it, and make more money, happier, meet more people, 
etc., etc., means more W's, right? What you'll notice about W's is just like L's, it's the weather. When it rains, it pours. When you're winning, everything starts to win. Have you noticed when you're winning in life, your crush DMs you? Bitch, where the fuck were you when I was losing, you fucking loser? You have to take advantage advantage of the, the the greatest thing you can see is me or any other streamer. Why do channels like mine start to suck? It all started with a two month absence, meaning the death of your productivity always comes after the death of your momentum. Momentum is the most crucial fact to success, right? Momentum, you know when you're going, you know when you stopped, you know when you're stalled out. If you know you're going and you have people around you, your mom, dad, cousin, friends, blah, 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 saying, man, you look tired, you should take a day off. These people are fucking losers. Your parents are losers. Right? Your parents are losers. If anyone ever tells you to take a break because you look tired, they're saying, I'm worried about your health because you're winning so much. You don't understand that willpower is finite in humans, meaning you're going to fall off. So you better take advantage of the momentum. If you're crushing it, you have to go harder. That's the only thing you can do, right? Either keep going at that level or go harder. But if you take your foot off the gas, oh my God, right? Someone asked me why did I take such a long break? I had uh, some health complications, but... uh, Think about what happened to me. I would left 7,000 subscribers every single month. Plus, right? It was like, it was reacting with 7,000 subscribers. Meaning, I can't tell you how easy of a life that is. Like, no streamer on this website can say with a small chat they've done 7,000 subs. You could do that with 5,000 viewers, but that, looking back, I should have just skipped all of my medical stuff and kept going, looking back, in hindsight. However, there's a bigger bag. For example, um, if I got all my medical stuff done, by the time I'm 40 years old, I will receive a huge bag from my family if I get all this medical shit done and prove to them. And I'm not saying I use my moderators to Photoshop my medical results so my parents believe me. I'm saying I don't get help in my youth. I'll get help much later in life. But to secure that aid that that I don't want going to other family members that don't give a fuck about me. and, And, you know, I did it by myself. And when I did it by myself, I said, I want a bigger production. I want, you know, I do want aid. I do want help. So I said, you know what? I'm not letting this go to fucking losers who smoke weed. I'm taking this. And so I did all that. However, right? I spent a year at 5,000 subs minimum. Straight. Five to 6,000 a year straight. Um... Much longer than a year because I was doing for six months, 22 to 41 hour shifts streaming. No streamer on the website has done that ever in history, in the history of Twitch. Proving I have the most stamina in the game, right? It solidified my position in my head, you know? That's why people are like, oh, when your views are low, you look confident still. I'm like, yeah, I know what to do. I know everything. I know I'm a fucking stable genius. I get it. Right? There's not one streamer on this website who does 22-hour streams. The only people who do it are streamers who don't talk. (sighs) 
Name one streamer that pulls a 20-hour stream talking throughout the whole thing, high energy to the end with manic ups and downs. Yeah, old train for sure, but I'm saying besides train, right? This is my mentor. You can't really use train. XQC immediately relies on gaming. And yeah, yeah you know, I'm, I, I'm not knocking him. You know, XQC will be like gaming for two hours and be like, chat, I'm thinking of a number between one and 10. And then chat will just grow because he said that. But I don't think comparing, you cannot compare energy levels of anyone on this website to peak Zerka. Ever. Right? I see a dumbass saying Ludwig. Ludwig slept and showered on stream. That, honestly, that subathon is a cakewalk. I think that's the first thing I'll do when I live in Texas, just to show you guys it's a cakewalk. But it's so funny how no one in my life, no subscriber, no friend, no family, will ever give me my flowers. You know? Do you know how exhausted you are after manically talking for 22 hours straight? Dude, this was worse than me doing construction. But I don't like saying it because it sounds like, like I'm being a, like I'm a prima donna or whatever the fuck it's called. You know what I mean? But I guarantee that if I pull these VODs, if I pull 30 VODs in a row from my peak energy days, I guarantee there is not one person on the internet that has done half of what I did. And if they did, they did it with over 50,000 viewers supporting, right? We're, I was doing 1 to 2K 3k with some fucking vr right but really who the fuck would do 22 hour shifts for 1.5k average viewers nobody when i say i did i kind of did that to prove a point but also to you know save a lot of money right when i say i've never once heard anyone ever talk about me being number one for energy levels I only heard it when I was doing it, but when it was done, it's like it never happened. People just forgot. Who gives a fuck? My subscribers are pieces of shit for forgetting. Okay? You guys are pieces of shit. You guys are trying to say other people did my hours? Are you serious? You're a piece of shit if you say that. Damn, you know how exhausted I didn't go, I didn't go out one day in the summer in a dark room i didn't go on one date i didn't go to one party i didn't do and i had more i had a more of a relationship with the uber eats guy than anyone in my life you guys are literal pieces of shit but why everyone forgets that i'm number one for energy levels is because i never once complained ever You know how streamers will do eight hours and start being like, wow, I'm really doing it, bro. I should have done that. But coming from such a shithole life I had felt like a blessing. It started with farming VIPs, turned to React, then podcasts with React. And that year flew by. And I'll say this, that was the best year of my life. Also, the most incel I've ever been. That means I'm the only person on the internet who's ever done, I deleted fitness, right? I'm back on it now. I deleted fitness, couldn't do it, way too tired. Social life, and it was just streaming, right? Why I did that for a year is to prove to myself I'm number one, right? Meaning if anything goes bad in my life, I'll just cut out my social life, everything, and go back on hardcore grind. But students, 
listen to me. I hate that for a year I was called the king. Random chatters would jump in and be like, you're a machine, you're an animal. But when it's done, everyone forgot. That's why I think working for yourself is based. Because you'll clock in serious hours. When people are like, oh, bro, if you if I worked for myself, I would just be lazy all day. No, you wouldn't. You work for yourself and it's going to eat at you when you're failing. Do you own any business? Yeah, I actually amplified my wealth threefold last year doing certain things. And um, I'm really proud of that. You know, I'm really proud that uh, I didn't get like a car, a TV, this. Went back into just investments. I would spend four hours a day on just... um, business courses but not just random ones like specific ones right and and i spent so much time fucking with these marketing courses free courses right like online and i was like why the fuck am i of all people trying to understand marketing you know people who teach marketing have no idea what the fuck they're doing okay like (laughs) at all okay the the one streamer on the platform who speaks on a microphone for the first time and does half a million views overnight, makes $10,000 his first fucking stream, that's a marketing genius. You have to understand your strengths. So I kind of wasted time with the marketing shit. Exactly, that's why they're teaching. But another thing is it's strong mental health to do something to, to do something for a year that's damn near impossible because you always walk around with your chest out that, hey, if I did a year, I could do two, I could do three, I could, right? But something did change after my uh, surgeries and stuff is um, I started thinking of bigger projects, investments. I really don't believe in grinding and saving to be wealthy no one in the history no one has ever become wealthy saving money and if your game plan is just oh i'm gonna buy a house and sit on it that means by the time you're wealthy you'll be 60 years old right time is money energy is money And you have a lot more energy 20 to 30 than 30 to 35 and different priorities. Trust me. So what you want to do with your 20s is a grind set in cell mode, building you wealth, right? Well, relative to what you have. We call it wealth, right? Fuck it, right? Middle class wealth. (laughs) But also networking meeting people so you get new opportunities and i met great people who are like damn you're a machine you should you should make up we should do a podcast together we should do this and uh yeah it was like the greatest lesson i ever taught myself was uh um when you work for yourself you go hard as fuck not in the beginning you know after a bunch of failure it happens now could anyone on earth do 20 hour streams with 10,000 viewers in chat easily not anyone but a lot of people can but you give people a smaller channel they'll fold like little bitches right and uh yeah so i guess what i'm saying is you need this trifecta why i don't like people going full incel mode is because Think about who went full incel mode and it worked for them. The most social nightclub security guy that had a bunch of girls and friends. and You know what I mean? So I was the opposite of an incel. So going incel mode actually benefited me. It took me away from distractions. You could not do what I do because you're already a fucking incel. Or you're behaving like one. You're always alone and in your room, Right? So you doing the full red circle of only career will damage you and people will kind of look at you like a freak. You won't be able to network. But if you have a social life, a girl, friend, um, 
you know what I mean? You got it together, then people network with you and they kind of like adopt you and help you out and give you opportunities. And I don't want to say help out because the only reason someone's giving you opportunities is because he's benefiting off you. Okay. Period. You know, if you, when you guys come on my podcast, I'm gaining something from you. It's not like, don't ever see it like, oh, John's really helping me out. No, you're being used. Okay. Anyone who helps you is gaining from you. They're like vampires. So you need to start seeing it like, oh, okay, John, John's just offering the platform. He's going to lean back and I get to do my thing. But yeah, another thing is don't get banned. Don't get fired. Don't make any of my mistakes. Every job I had, channel, when the channel was like peak, banned, 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 perma banned, perma banned, perma banned. Perma, don't do that. Skip the, the Zirka lore, right? If you skip that part, right because it's not like when you're unbanned you're a fucking g you you come back with traumatic experiences that make you a worse a less productive person you don't want to accumulate bands and all that stupid shit especially to be real you know what i mean like oh i'm so real i'm always banned no i could have skipped a lot of bs so sometimes i feel late Another thing is understand the language of investing, dude. It is so much better to lose money through your investments than to have it sit in the bank and let it fade away, okay? It's so fucking stupid. Most people who copied my thing when I was starting off on the internet, the only thing they were missing, why they all got wiped off the internet, right, is they were never, like Gunny says, professionals, right? I come from a security background. You have to be professional or you get sued to hell and you you know, you know go to jail and shit. So I brought a level of professionalism. But you look in my big beginning, there was no professionalism. I was downing 151 liquor and doing all this crazy shit. So, yeah. Also, never kick yourself when you're down. Because that is addictive, right? Kicking yourself is the most addictive thing you can do. Becoming a victim is intoxicating. It's the greatest feeling on earth. Don't do that. Even I do that. <sighs> and uh, Bobby understands. But yeah. Uh, and then at the end of the day, it really comes down to career and mental health, right? Like you'll have people who've been streaming 20 years like destiny and you'll be like why is he doing emails and playing stardew valley when he could just have a bunch of streamers on and get more viewers and money he the reason why a lot of streamers have these boring streams is they take breaks from the they're taking a break from always being talking to someone on a headset and you know like it's like a mental break you understand so eventually you start choosing career versus mental health right it always comes down to that but you don't know it you don't know it you just say i'm fatigued i'm exhausted whatever but uh yeah um another thing the greatest way to explain success is watching streamers these are losers that only became successful through their friends right can you name one streamer that didn't leech? No, you can't. You cannot, right? Unless they're the first ones on the website or the first ones on TikTok and blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah. Uh, How did Raj get big? Raj is an example of maxing out networking skill, right? Because a lot of people will watch me and they'll be like, well, Zerka is better at networking. Like, he'll get on podcasts with anyone, even libtards like him, and Zerka's the best. And just the way he's never like corny and awkward. And no, Zerka's not the best at networking, right? Yeah, I'm funny sometimes, blah, blah, blah. Raj was the greatest networker this website's ever seen right? 
and he was pushy. He like, Circa, get on my show. Get on my show. What do you need? What do you need? You need money? You need this? Get on the show. Get on the, listen, listen, get on the show and okay, we'll do this for you. Just get on the show. Mitch, Mitch, Zerka's getting on. He's calling you a bitch if you don't, you, you, Mitch, you have to. Mitch, you, are you afraid of Zerka, Mitch? And Mitch would be like, no, no, I'm getting on the show. Canute, Canute, just stay up later. Canute, we need you. Don't let us down. This guy was so good at being likable, but extremely pushy, just like salespeople, right? It's not like anyone's mad at him. What you have to remember is being pushy makes you more likable, okay? You look like you have somewhere to be. You're going somewhere. Hey, take me with you. And all my life, I'm like, I don't want to be seen as the pushy guy. No, no. Stop thinking everyone takes it personally, right? And hold people accountable. Don't be like me. I had four giant guests who would come on my podcast but they were all late or were no shows for one, one episode in a month. And I banned them forever. I said, never, ever contact me for anything. And the day you get canceled, I'm going to do a hit piece. And looking back on this, I'm like, damn, they hopped on every stream. Why the fuck did I like kill the streaming analytics because I was mad at them? Again, it was my feminine side. I took it personal, right? And eventually you saw me evolve. Eventually you guys saw me have people I don't even like on my podcast. And I'll just sit back and smile. And I'd be like the host. I'm a businessman. I get along with everyone, blah, blah, blah. But it took so long for me to change that thinking, man. Right? And I, I never fully changed. Because when they had dropped their takes, I was like, they're brainwashing chat. I would give my take and mute them. Right? When really I could have just leaned back and played it like Raj right? Or maybe I should have. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is you will win when you recognize your flaws, right? Because only an idiot doesn't play to their strengths. You should know your strengths right away, right? Uh, that's why I don't like when people force trash talk in sporting events, boxing. If you're not a trash talker, shut the fuck up. You're cringe. You know what I mean? Right? Let the trash talkers do it in boxing, in MMA. You know what I mean? So a lot of people don't understand their own strengths. For example, Kamaru Usman. Here's a killer that he doesn't even have to talk and he would be seen as God tier, but he tries to trash talk. It's not his nature to trash talk and it kind of like ruins his marketability and shit. You know what I mean? But, um, at the end of the day, don't be a slave to the dollar. If you're a slave to the dollar, if you look like me, you'll make an OnlyFans, right? Uh, Manuel Ferrer, a good buddy of mine, loved this guy to death, right? He said, Zirka, if you ever did cross to the dark side and join Pornhub or whatever, I said, how fast till I get that 488 Ferrari? He said, it'd be within a few weeks. I'm like, I'm not going to perform like the pros. He's like, you wouldn't have to. And I just smiled. I was like, yeah. Huh. But damn, the more I think about it, the devil is in chat. Look at devil. It's tempting. And OF would mean I get a Ferrari. Excuse me. I would have 10 Ferraris because I would be able to collab with 1,000. I only have OF friends, right? So I'll just start accessing and be like, collab, 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 collab. And they all love me. They never talk shit. Just, to this day, no girl's ever said anything. Oh, Zirko's creepy or anything. Nothing. I met all of them. I would have 10 Ferraris within a year. But I'm not a slave to the dollar. I'll do it my way. Right? Because what is money without mental? Right? What is a million dollars to a samurai? Right? Samurais were not on OnlyFans. So, yeah. But, sometimes I wonder for my long-term subscribers, if you were me, would you make an OF? I wonder. Because you say you wouldn't, but then if you're in my shoes, I think a lot of you would fold. You know what I mean? Because, let's be honest, I'm extremely good-looking on my good days. You know, when I'm not... Or retarded as fuck, right? Uh, 
Now, I don't think there's that much mental trauma with a male's OF compared to a girl's. So I think I would, I think I'm the greatest personality for an OF. I would, you know, I would not feel it. But again, there's some pride issues I, I have. You know what I mean? Not pride issues. I would say pride armor. You know, I like it. So, you know, at the end of the day, it comes down to who do I look up to? And I love Alex Jones. Now to the calls now, for action. Now, is Alex Jones on OF? Action across this country, Texas Senator John Cornyn, who was there in Uvalde while we were there yesterday, now back in Washington tonight. And today he was directed by Republican Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell to now meet Hold on. With- Last piece of advice is I think investing in coaching is more important than actually investing your money in any good business. Coaching is the most based shit. If you have good coaching, I mean. Coaching takes you to the next level. Dude, if we just look at, let's just look at in sports, right? Some fat slob coach works with the pro fighters. And you'd be like, well, this guy can't fight. He's a fat slob. You don't understand that why coaching is so based is, oh, you pay the money, whatever, but they tweak one thing of yours then makes you a hundred times more effective. You know, if you tweak someone's punch correctly, they actually start to become deadly, right? If they tweak your mental, if they tweak your business, they coaching is the most based fucking shit. And it would not be a waste of life to spend all your fucking money on the internet, finding coaches for everything you think is worthy of your time. It's not a waste of a life at all, right? Unless you're not mastering any of the skill sets and you're just fucking hopping from coach to coach. The Democrats What's for he a saying? possible bipartisan solution. So tonight, the obvious question, is there actual movement on this with the vast majority of Americans now wanting something done? ABC's Rachel Scott on the Hill tonight. Texas Senator John Cornyn returning to Washington from the scene of the tragedy. Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell encouraging him to meet with Democrats. Isn't a coach a teacher, though, John? No, a teacher you don't choose. You don't choose your teachers, right, in high school and shit. You don't choose. You don't even choose your professors. A lot of times you join psychology and you have this retarded professor, not even the good one. You know what I mean? I had Jennifer Poole. She was pretty cool. I had a good psychology prof, but... uh, yeah, a coach you choose. You're like, oh, I joined this football team. I want this as my coach, right? So I think this is what everyone should be doing. Get a coach for the gym. Skip the bullshit of watching YouTubers and thinking you know how to lift, right? And then you'll realize that after six months, you don't need coaching, right? Especially if you spend good money, you, you listen more, right? Why paywalls exist is so people do what the fucking coach says, they don't, it's not just for profit. If I train one dude in chat for free, he's not going to follow the diet plan. If I take a thousand dollars from him, he is going to be the most shredded fucking monster you'll ever see in your life. Right? So again, just like everything, it's almost biblical, right? It is sacrifice. A trade equivalent exchange must happen, even though there is no equality with any deal, right? It's always you getting screwed, but you have this potential in you to make the most of it. If you are not sacrificing something, you are a fucking, you're spinning your wheels. Nothing is free. Nothing. What I can tell you is people who get coaches for the gym reach their fitness goals period period people who don't get coaches spend five years looking the same at the gym and spend one hundred thousand dollars trying different supplements training program blah 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 they spend so much time on the internet just figuring out how to lift a heavy object are you stupid right? That makes no sense to me, right? The greatest thing you'll ever learn, and if you're like me, you're cheap, so it's hard to fucking learn this, throwing money at problems is something no one will ever, 
ever tell you to do, yet is it is the number one most base thing you can do with any any endeavor. Throwing money at problems is the fastest way to keep up momentum. You're a YouTuber, throw money at the fucking editors, let them do it so you don't have to get a headache editing, so you can stay creative, blah, blah, blah. You're a streamer, blah, blah, blah. Don't get the shitty computer, get the nice computer, have less headaches, stream more hours. So your all your job is to make your life cockpit cozy so you can work, Right? Yes, get a nice gaming chair, whatever the fuck. Make it cozy if you're a streamer. And I didn't know this in the beginning. I was like, ooh, right? Yeah. Also, all information you absorb has to make you feel bad. All right? The only where the only places you'll ever find truth is things that make you feel bad. For example, in fitness, you want to change your body. What's something you don't want to hear? You have to squat. You have to do dips, pull-ups. You want to do arm curls. You don't want to do pull-ups. Those are hard. But the truth always comes with a bad feeling. It's a fair feeling. It's fair. You want everyone to look at you and give you the 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 the, the flowers. Wow, your physique is amazing. Without doing the work. No, you're going to do your dips, your pull-ups, the hard shit. And it's like that for politics, that the answers you get in politics, in everything you do, that bad feeling in your stomach means it's the truth. Almost always. If you got a feeling, your chick's a hoe, that feeling is real. That thing is real, dude. That will mean that it's, she is. How much do you squat? I don't squat. I have an, I have an amazing body. Ugh. Anyways, chat rapid fire things that make you feel bad that are true for any subject. Go. I know I'm going somewhere with this. I'm just tired. What's uncomfortable truths? But why I'm saying truth is important is you waste no time when you have the truth you're like okay i got a bench i got a squat i got a deadlift uncomfortable truths leaving your friend group to chill with your coworkers. nobody wants to do that that's an uncomfortable truth that that you that is what the adult world is you know if you want to be an adult and you do everyone wants to be an adult right antichrist what oh the flat earth that's a great one right it makes you feel bad in your stomach that you've been lied to all right 